congratulations, you made it through the main content. And now we're going to be talking about the case studies. This is going to be a significant part of the exam, about 50%. And it's very important that you understand how to review the case study questions and also prepare ahead of time before you take the test. I'll talk about that and understand what Google is asking and types of questions around the case studies that you should expect on this very challenging exam. Let's go ahead and proceed. Case study questions take up nearly 50% of the exam. Case studies are listed here. Let's go take a quick look and validate that you're looking at the right page. I'm over here at the case study page. It's located essentially right, uh, right at the very end, pretty much, of the Professional Cloud Architect CERT exam guide. So let's go down and take a quick look here. So we have Mount Kirk Games. That's the first case study. And when we look at the case study, it's important to realize that each of the case studies are approached a little differently. So when you look at this, let's look at the other two, and you'll see that there's a little different structure, different titles in some cases. And some of the case study questions are going to be more technical than others. Some will be more focused on the business objectives. Some will be focused on the technical objectives. Now, I'm not going to read it all to you. That's up to you to take a look at. But uh, I'd recommend you read through these at least four or five times to make sure that you get the flow of each of these. You'll likely see two out of the three case study questions on the exam. At least that's what I've been told and what I had seen as well with the new version. Uh, again, your experience may, may be a little different. Let me know again. Um, generally, Google doesn't, at least historically, I should say, the, the last two Cloud Architect versions, they usually give you two out of four case studies. Now, what's different about this release of the exam is that there's three case studies instead of four. So you see that there's business requirements. So there's a solution concept here, read that, but basically the business requirements, you'll get questions, and we have plenty of sample questions coming up. I'll go through them, but it'll, it'll give you a scenario about the case study and ask you to address specific business requirements, like how to improve uptime, uh, increase efficiency, reduce latency. For example, if you have a relational database and you want to reduce latency to your customer base, then you need to look at specific solutions and determine how that can be accomplished. Same thing around uh, storage. For example, you may want to locate your buckets in the right geographic region. When you're reviewing the case study, they're going to give you specific details to identify. Uh, for example, let's just go up here. There, so we knew that we're looking at MySQL. And then when we scroll down here, you can see that uh, it's very important uh, that they meet their KPIs. And being that as KPIs, they're key performance indicators. And that generally means that generally, again, not always the case, that money uh, should not be an object into meeting those requirements. So if latency is a problem, maybe they need to generate their data locally and analyze it locally and then store it closer to the regions of their user base. Scale up and down, maybe it's load balancing, whatever that situation is. Now, dress for when. Let's go ahead and look at this one. Now, you see this, this uh, case study has more technical details in it. it. Tells you MySQL. They're using Redis. That means they're doing some caching, right? Compute options. They're using Apache Hadoop. We know that if, if a customer is using Apache Hadoop, probably Data Proc could be on the list of services to use, just one of them. Again, just some things to think about here. Storage, they're using storage appliances, 100 terabytes of storage. Migration question, 
again, you know, what is the limit that Google recommends for you to migrate um, over, you know, let's say uh, a telecom line? Or what would you be able to use to get an appliance, for example? Business requirements are here and technical requirements are here. This is the general case study structure. So you see the first one was less technically detailed than the second one. Let's look at the third one. Terra Earth case study, solution concept, existing technical environment. Once again, it's not as detailed. They do have a little bit down here as far as applications. So this is actually a pretty good approach. This is actually an updated uh, version of this case study, actually. They have two different applications, App 1 and App 2. On the case study, you, uh, questions that you'll receive, you'll likely get at least one, if not two, questions asking you how to um, identify latency issues or how to increase performance. When we get to the case study questions for each of the three case studies um, coming up here, We'll go more into the case studies, into detail, provide some more insight. I just want to make sure that you know where to look for them, where to get started. Okay, let's move on. As stated, the case study questions take up 50% of the exam. The questions will, of course, be very important to understand. And as recommended, you need to read these ahead of time. They're giving you the case studies. Try to make sure you get the flow. And just in in the back of your head, I, I just recommend this so many times, to be honest, is try to think of types of questions that you'll be asked on the exam around migration, reducing efficiency, uh, I mean, actually increasing efficiency, reducing cost. M you know, migration is going to be tested pretty heavily. So understand the migration options and how you might address that in that case study. Also, to identify Google Cloud services that may meet the technical or the business requirements. Another area that's new for this uh, exam version is DevOps and more advanced development knowledge. So, for example, continuous integration, CI pipelines, continuous deployment, Another thing you need to know, right? These are things that are going to be tested. For example, expect a question that will ask you about how to deploy a CI pipeline and how this will solve the problem for the case study customer and what will be the proper order of Google Cloud Services. Generally, you're going to want some kind of repository or GitHub. After that, you may want to use Kubernetes Engine. After that, um, depending on the type of service, don't forget you'll probably want load balancing. And depending on the application, is it TCP load balancing or is it HTTP load balancing? That's, again, go back to the uh, load balancing section if you don't totally grasp those differences. lot there to, uh, to facilitate. Okay, so here's the meat of this specific uh, module around case study basics. They're going to focus the exam questions on cost optimization, how to reduce costs. Fairly straightforward. So how do you reduce the cost of your virtual machines? What are the tools available? For example, Recommendation Engine will help identify waste in your VM usage and give you an option to reduce that image um, requirement to, to save some money. Business use case, looking at the business um, specified scenario, look at the proper use cases that might apply for that situation. Data migration, how do you get data from AWS into Google Cloud? How do you get data from on-prem into Google Cloud? Also, as part of migrations, how do you migrate your virtual machines? Integration. How does this all work together? How do you tie in your on-prem into, um, into your uh, Google Cloud services? For example, how do you tie in monitoring 
right? How do you define metrics? Also, when it comes to integration, Stackdriver has a lot of capabilities built in for, for monitoring and management. But also, too, you could also use specific features of Stackdriver to be able to identify trace issues and debug the application, latency issues. Metrics. Being able to identify metrics like KPI, return on investment, these are areas that you can expect to see. Uh, also, too, as part of metrics, uh, identifying, for example, uh, go to the pricing calculator and trying to um, understand what the costing may be and how to manage those costs, for example, with billing and um, also, to cost optimization plays in there, too. Lastly, security and compliance. Identity and access management is heavily tested. You'll need to know cloud identity. You'll need to know G Suite solutions that can be integrated. For example, with G Suite, you have GDPRS, for example, and, and forgive the acronym uh, goof up there, but um, basically the uh, G Suite directory services that can be integrated. You also have cloud identity as well. And then when it comes to permissions, you have the ability to uh, to get as granular as different types of permissions you could address. And then let's see, service accounts. These are just some of the areas we're going to cover. We covered all these areas already um, to a degree in the content uh, before, but we want to put it all together and start identifying how we could increase our return on investment, for example, or reduce the risk to our company. Key management is also part of this as well. All right. Also, too, there's going to be aspects around deployment of applications. This is strictly around CI pipelines and also um, around availability as well and delivery. Quality control. For example, how you could use Stackdriver to facilitate some areas around there. How you could use Cloud Build for deployment of applications and services as well. Monitoring Stackdriver, again, is really the main focus here. Uh, also, too, um, using the console, uh, using, uh, for example, um, in the Google Cloud Console, you have uptime checks, for example, monitors that could be utilized. You have the dashboard that you customize, so on and so on. And then lastly, application design best practices. This is, again, um, really focused on development. And this could catch a lot of, I guess, what you would call um, non-developers in the sense that if you don't know much about Agile, if you don't know much about DevOps, you don't know a lot about A-B testing, um, you know, basically migrating applications. These, this area might be a little tough. Okay. Basically, um, in a nutshell, a lot of the questions are going to determine if you understand the right data flow. And when we go through the case study questions, we're going to talk about data flow and how you could create your now well actually how developers create applications to for example use cloud functions to go out and send alerts or to be triggered how cloud pub sub could be utilized um, how you could use specific services like big table and big query to go out and you know find transactions that happened 10 months ago and you know create a report for you Whatever that data flow is is important. Load balancing, you name it. So much to cover. In a nutshell, the exam questions around case studies are really reflecting your ability to, to identify the right technical requirements or provide the right business requirements. Basically looking at GCP solutions and placing those solutions in the proper order. Several questions. Basically, were workflows, and you had to identify 
where um, Kubernetes engine fit in, where cloud functions might have fit in, compute engine, app engine, etc. Once again, knowing how to identify a CI pipeline is critical to your success for this exam. Let's move on. Now, the next modules are going to be more specific around each case studies. We'll go ahead and move on to Mount Kirk right now and talk about some case study practice questions to help you identify what you're going to expect on this exam.